Well, I was going to get started on washing the Forerunner out there to get it ready for compounding today. And as you can see, we got the fools from the city out here literally cutting the sidewalks out. Good thing is, uh, city workers are known for working fast and efficient, right? They don't usually take breaks till the job is done. Oh, it's been about an hour, just an update. You guys are still killing me! Alright, looks like the city goofs are finally gone, so I can get back to my plans of washing the Forerunner up. I'm going to start with uh, pre-rinsing it with an all-purpose cleaner just to help break down all of that oil spray residue that's on the on the painted surfaces. Uh, I've learned my lesson though, don't do that if you have healthy ceramic coatings, especially this G-Technic coating. Uh, like the Crystal Serum Light can handle it, but the EXO Top Coat, it's not into that. It'll strip it off, so... I'm going to be redoing the coatings anyway after polishing it obviously, so it's okay to do. Uh, I'm going to be using Optimum No Rinse to wash it. Again, uh, my original plan was to use like a regular soap, uh, because it was shady out front when I was planning on starting this, and now it's about six hours later and I'm going to be working in the direct sunlight. But it's not the end of the world, we can deal with that, so I'll be using Optimum No Rinse instead, and then uh, I'm going to break in a new auto scrub sponge for this one too. So I think I'm probably just going to throw the GoPro on my head and get at this sucker and uh, I got some time to make up so let's get after it. Alright so like I mentioned I'm starting off with a quick pre-rinse with an all-purpose cleaner and I'm doing this out in the direct sunlight so you, definitely you need to be careful with this. I kind of learned my lesson the hard way on this that you always hear people talk about not letting cleaners dry on the surface and uh, there's a lot of things that people cry wolf about, it's really not the end of the world. In this case, do not let this dry on the surface. <laughs> I ended up uh, pretty much staining the coating on the whole driver's side, I think uh, about a winter ago, when I just I wasn't paying attention and I let it dry on there. And uh, I'm going to be polishing it and recoating it right now, obviously, so it's not a big deal. I'll be fixing that up. But it's definitely something to keep in mind. It's not just a, a joke that people say when they're telling you not to let this stuff dry on your paint. It's a, it's a real deal. And I'm not agitating it or anything, I'm just spraying it on, letting it kind of sit and break down the, the dirt and grime a little bit and then just pressure washing it off. Now, you'll notice that I'm not using a foam cannon or anything. And yeah, this, this is kind of controversial. In my opinion, spraying it down with a, a strong cleaner like that first and then spraying it off is gonna do way more work than a gentle pH neutral soap and a foam cannon. If you're using a regular soap and a foam cannon and you're spraying it on and then not touching it and spraying it back off, I'm, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you are not doing a single thing other than looking cool for your Instagram shots, I guess. It's not doing anything. If that pH neutral soap isn't strong enough to strip a wax off of your car, <laughs> then spraying it onto your paint and then rinsing it off with water is not going to do anything for all the built up dirt and grime that's on your paint. So take that for what you will. That's my opinion. That's my experience. I don't feel the need for a foam cannon, for, even for something like this. That strong all-purpose cleaner is going to break down any dirt or oils or greases a lot better than uh, a fancy looking foam. You might not impress your neighbors as much with your uh, cool looking white vehicle with all the suds on it, but that's pretty much all you're getting out of that. Now in this case, one thing I am doing though, is I am using a, a pressure washer, which I don't use that often. And that's just really because I don't really have a place to keep it hooked up all the time, so I have to separately go and, and connect everything, and it's just kind of a pain. If I just want to wash a vehicle, I'll just wash it with a regular garden hose. It works fine. But in this case, uh, this thing was pretty dirty, and it, the oil spraying residue that was on there too, I wanted to try and get that off. All the mud that was on this thing in those original shots, I think that was two videos ago, you'll notice a lot of it is gone. And that's because I drove it in some pretty heavy rain a few times and it actually rinsed most of it off just without me even having to wash it. And again, keep in mind that this thing has already been ceramic coated and although the the layer of EXO on top, I pretty much torture tested that and murdered that, it's pretty much gone. The base layer of Crystal Serum Light is still going fairly strong on this thing, so it's still protecting the paint and it still makes it easier to clean when you have things like mud stuck to it. It, uh, it rinses off easier even just from a bad thunderstorm or something. And so I kinda cheated the system a bit there I guess, and I got 
kind of the initial pre-rinse done just by driving it in the rain. But I'm still using the pressure washer just to uh, do my best to get it as clean as possible. Because that is the name of the game here. If you're going to be doing any kind of polishing, any kind of paint correction, you've got to get it super clean. So I mentioned I'm using Optimum No Rinse here, mainly because I'm working in the direct sunlight and it's just easier to deal with uh, if you've never used it before. When Optimum No Rinse dries on the surface in pure sun, all you have to do is reactivate it and spray a little bit more onto the surface and you're good to go. No staining, no residue, no nothing. It's just so much easier to work with. So that's kind of my go-to whenever I'm stuck working in the sun. And you might be looking at the video and thinking, it looks like I'm just using water to wash this thing. You don't see any suds or anything on the wash mitt. And that's true, it, there aren't any suds or anything that's really visible when you use Optimum No Rinse. And that's just kind of a character trait of the product. It's not anything bad, it doesn't mean that it's not working, it doesn't mean that it's not actually a good cleaner. O&R is actually more of a, a suds killer. If you even have a, a bucket of regular soap that has a bunch of suds in it, and you dump some O&R in there, it'll actually kill some of the suds and actually kind of drop that down a little bit. But it doesn't mean it's not working, it's just it's it's just a, a different product. It just looks different when you're using it, but uh, rest assured, I'm not just wiping this thing down with water on a wash mitt. There is something on there. Uh, you don't notice it in the video, but in real life you can definitely feel it's really slick and uh, really slippery. But it does a good job. And again, I'm using the pressure washer first for a pre-rinse. I also use an all-purpose cleaner as a pre-rinse, so I'm not relying on this to do a, a whole lot of the heavy lifting. This is just kind of to do the, the final, let's say, 20% of the cleaning here. As for the process that I'm going with here, this is I, I am using two buckets. And you hear me say this all the time, if I'm going to be polishing a vehicle afterwards, I am not crazy about how I wash it, because it doesn't matter. If you pay attention to a lot of the really well-respected paint correction experts out there, and if you were to sit down and ask them, hey, what's the best way to wash a vehicle before you polish it? Most of them are going to tell you the same thing. It doesn't matter. Because A, your, your paint isn't as delicate as you might think in terms of one bad wash. And B, even if I create any kind of minor marring or even some swirl marks or something, Literally, as soon as I put a pad on the paint with a machine, it's going to obliterate any marks that came from the wash process. So anybody that's serious about paint correction, we don't care about the million step wash processes. That's for the, the really high end shops that are charging you a ton of money to work on your car. They know that their customers are, their service is a luxury and so they want to show you them doing a million steps because you feel better about that. You see your car getting super clean and you feel like you're getting your money's worth then when they're going through a 30 step wash process. Do you need to do that in order to safely correct your paint afterwards? No, of course not. And for me, I'm kind of a realist. Again, I've said it a million times already, this is my own vehicle, so I do not care about uh, following the book to a T. I know what I can get away with. I've been doing this for, for more than a couple of days, that's for sure. So. This might not be the ideal process, and again, the, my rule always is based on I'm gonna be polishing it afterwards. That goes for like using clay bars, for how I wash vehicles and everything. If I'm not gonna be polishing it afterwards, I'm way more careful about this kind of stuff, and I'll agree that certain things really do matter. But in this case, you'll see that even though I'm using a two bucket wash method here, I'm not going back into the bucket very often because I'm, I'm hurting for time here at this point, and I'm trying to make that up. And uh, every trip back to the bucket, and every time you're wringing out your wash mitt, that's just wasting time. And in the end, it, in this case, it really doesn't matter. It really is just that, it's just wasted time. And you'll see in the next video when I actually get started on inspecting the paint, and uh, I'll show you with the light, the condition of the paint before we get started on polishing. And considering what this poor Forerunner has been through in the last two and a half years, it was in fantastic shape. So uh, this less than ideal car wash method, it didn't do any extra damage and uh, it's not, a, not that big of a deal.
Again, now, because I'm gonna be polishing it afterwards, I'm not using any kind of a drying aid after. Normally, if this is just like a regular maintenance wash, I would use, depending on what's on the vehicle, whether it's ceramic coated or not, or it just has a wax or a sealant on it. If it's got a wax or a sealant on it, I'll usually spray a couple shots of spray wax or something on there just before I do that final wipe with a drying towel. If it's ceramic coated lately, I've been using Bead Maker as a drying aid, and it works awesome. Bead Maker and Optimum No Rinse are like a match made in heaven. Like for two products from two completely different companies, they work really well together in my experience. And that's that's what I've used on the Forerunner in the last few months, just because that top layer of EXO has been pretty much all but stripped. It got to the point where washing this Forerunner was just like washing an unwaxed car. Like the water was just pooling on the surface. Even though the Crystal Serum light layer was still kind of there and doing its job, that fancy exo layer that does all of the the cool water beating and stuff was gone and it's not really fun washing a vehicle like that so i tried experimenting with pns bead maker which i guess i realize now there's no way of saying that company name without sounding anyways i've been using bead maker and it brought back the the water behavior characteristics on this coating just by doing like one or two sprays per panel just before i wipe it down I didn't follow all the rules of doing like a dry application really thick using like three quarters of a bottle the first time. I didn't do any of that. Like, <laughs> I seriously, it was wet. I gave it kind of one squirt on the panel, wiped it down, and it started beating water again. Great. So, if you have a ceramic coating that's getting a little long in the tooth and it's not really behaving the way that it's supposed to or it used to, but you're not quite ready to bite the bullet and have it corrected and recoated again, then definitely look into using Bead Maker. In my case, Optimum No Rinse for washing and Bead Maker as a drying aid on G Technic coatings. I know three different companies, but those three products are, they work well together. So now moving on to the, the clay bar process. And I'm, I, these clay blocks are kind of my go to these days. I'm just kind of sick of using traditional clay bars. I don't do any kind of claying if I'm not going to be polishing a vehicle afterwards. That's just kind of my thing. Just because even you can have the, the fanciest of Japanese or Korean clay or wherever people are getting the expensive stuff from. And on the, the wrong paint job, if it's really soft or it's just gloss black or something, it doesn't matter how careful you are or how much you spend on products, you're still going to be marring the paint. So if I'm going to clay something, I always follow it up with at least a quick polish. And then that also means that I don't have to be so careful with the claying process. So I usually stick with these nano skin auto scrub sponges just because they're easier to work with. A really great thing about these is that even if you do happen to drop it on the ground, as long as you wipe it off really carefully and make sure you get everything off, you can reuse it. Unlike a clay bar, as soon as the clay bar hits the ground, she's dead in the water, you gotta get another one. And these are just, they're just overall, I find them easier to use. They're easier to, the shape of them is easier to hang on to. I've got kind of big hands and it's just, I don't know, personal preference. I hear some people talk about clay barring their vehicle and how it takes them all afternoon. And listen guys, if decontaminating and clay barring your vehicle is taking you that many hours, you're doing something wrong. I'm all for just relaxing in your garage and enjoying yourself. and. If, and if that's what's taking you so long because you're just enjoying the process and you're not in any kind of a hurry, then more power to you. But clay barring a vehicle should not take longer than an hour. I don't care if it's a full-size pickup truck or it's a smart car. Uh, I guess maybe if you're really out of shape and you're, <laughs> you're gasping for air as you're working, maybe that'll slow you down, but there's no reason for it to take that long. All right, we're nice and clean now and decontaminated. Two things worth noting. Uh, number one, surprisingly hardly any contamination on this thing at all. No fallout, nothing. Which is really saying something considering this thing sits outside year round. Uh, so I guess that's a testament to the ceramic coating. That's one big bonus is uh, stuff just doesn't really stick to it. The second thing that I noticed was actually an issue that I had. Uh, there's a reason why I break in those uh, nano skin sponges on my own vehicles and not other people's. Uh, they they say that you're supposed to break it in on a piece of glass, like on your windshield or something like that, and scrub for I think it's like 30 seconds, and uh, then you're you got to get that original coating off of the rubber, and then it'll actually start working properly. 
Uh, so you use your glass because obviously you're not going to scratch your glass like you would your paint. Uh, the problem I ran into is I could not get it to break in for the life of me. And so it was leaving traces of rubber behind all over the paint everywhere. Just driving me nuts. And so once again, it's my own vehicle. I don't really care. I can always scrub it off. I'm going to be polishing this anyway, so it's not the end of the world. But uh, I ended up getting probably three quarters of the way through the whole thing. And it finally was starting to glide the way that it was supposed to. So something to keep in mind for you guys if you're uh, going to be using these auto scrub sponges. Make sure you take the time to break them in right. So I guess that's a wrap for this one guys. Uh, I'll catch you on the next one where we're going to start examining the paint and we're going to get going on compounding. See you on the next one.